What is up, YouTube? This is Dave Croft. Welcome to week four of my 52 Qs weekly vlog, where I unpack a Q that I, that I uh, created in the week before and uh, talk about maybe something uh, that was a challenge or uh, something that came up or just a topic that uh, that's just kind of effervescing in, in, my, uh, in my consciousness of, of something that I want to talk about as it pertains to specifically production music. And uh, also, if you have any questions or anything, you can ask those and I'll address those as we go. But today, uh, I want to talk about using loops and samples specifically in production music because as, as I talked about last week, I wrote five hip hop cues last week. In last week's video I talked about, I said, you know, I'm going to be talking about hip hop because that's absolutely what happened. A big, big push for, uh, for, for a publishing, a publisher, and they needed hip hop cues and they needed them fast. And so really cranked out five, five of these types of hip hop cues, uh, all urban contemporary type cues. And this brings up the idea of using loops and samples in production music, because we can't, we can't remove the idea of looping phrasing from hip hop because it's just baked into how the style works. It's very, very loop based and use usage of samples. And, and, and the, this, this cue is called a uh, main attraction. And uh, I'll talk about the sounds and everything here in just a minute. But before that, I want to talk about when it's okay to use loops and samples in production music. And, and I mean, of course, and I'm starting with the understanding that, that, that we have legally obtained all of the loops and samples that we are wanting to use, that we have, we've secured the license for them, whether it's through splice or output or plugin. I'm not talking about anything ripped from a radio. I'm not talking about any, uh, you know, a, a torrent or I don't know, is torrenting still a thing? Uh, I, it's, I'm not talking about just getting a bunch of, of, of audio files from a buddy or, or something like that or, or on a Reddit. I'm, I'm not talking about illegally or, or, or nefariously. I don't want to say nefarious, but you know what I'm talking about. Legally obtained, licensed loops and samples. And I'm not, I'm not even talking about the, uh, the, the moral implications of using, you know, non-licensed samples. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, you can, that's, that's between you and, and your maker, I guess. But really, it, it, I want to talk about using legally obtained loops and samples in production music. Now, the, 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 the easiest thing to say is don't use loops and samples or don't, don't use loops. But I have found that that's a, that's a little too harsh. And I use loops quite frequently in my production music, but, but where we can get into trouble is when we use loops that do the way I like to think of it, that do the, the heavy lifting of composition for us. Meaning it's bringing the, maybe the melodic content. It's bringing the harmonic content and meaning a loop that, that is a, a full on melody, a hook or something, or a loop that is, is a full, fully realized chord progression and, 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 or a loop that has multiple layers of sound in it. So it has like a bass line and maybe a, a strat something or other, and then horn stabs all in, all in one looped all in one loop. No, there are creative reasons not to use loops and there are industry reasons not to use loops. The creative reasons not to really lean on these loops is because it's it's kind of a, a creative cul-de-sac. You will eventually find the end of the loops that you have access to. And if we're looking to make a sustainable career in this, then leaning on hooks and melodies and, and riffs and, and things like that that you find from loops is ultimately a dead end. You might have some really good traction with a couple of cues, but if, if you submit some, some cues to a library and they say, great, we, we want 15 more of those, then then you got to be able to make with those. And if you can't, because you, you've exhausted the loops that you have, 
then that's just not sustainable. So ultimately, depending on loops to do that heavy creative lifting is, is, a, is, a, is a dead end. That path is not sustainable. So that's the creative reason not to use loops uh, that do the composition for us. The industry reason where we get into trouble using loops has to do with uh, content ID and originality. So let's say you are publisher A and you, you get a track from a composer who has uh, implemented a, a hook that they got from Splice or, or, or Output uh, or, or even using a, a plugin like a heaviosity plugin or, or, or something like that where you hit one, one note or an alchemy uh, arpeggiator. You, hit, you hold one note and you hear a full melody. Well, then publisher A takes that, registers it, gets it copyrighted, uh, puts it through Song Trust or, or whatever uh, sound source. I'm not saying that right. Um, but YouTube content ID type of a, of a system. Sound scan, I think that's what I'm thinking of, maybe. <laughs> Regardless, they put it through a, a, a content ID system, and then it gets kind of married to Publisher A. Then Publisher B comes along. They have a track from a different composer, and that composer has used the same legally obtained loop, sample, patch, arpeggiator, whatever, and puts it into their queue. Now, Publisher B goes to register it, and the Content ID system hears and figures out through their algorithm and science, they figure out that this hook also appeared with Publisher A. And so it then attributes the ownership of that cue, that material, to Publisher A, even though Publisher B has attempted to publish it. The, and the more sophisticated all of these content ID algorithms get, the more complicated this becomes. And so this has created a world of headaches for libraries and publishers, and, and, and content ID has also made it really difficult for publishers to retitle Q. So QA goes to this publisher, and then they just release it under a different title. That's created a whole headache. And, and I believe that content ID is going to move us even further to exclusivity, but maybe that's a topic for another video. But using samples and loops, especially harmonic and melodic loops, are creating a real headache for publishers who are looking to copyright and, 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 and content ID all of their cues to the point where some publishers are now overtly prohibiting this, meaning you can't use any of these types of loops in your, in your productions. Which begs the question, what, what, what types of loops are okay? When can we use loops? When is it safe to use loops? And for me, I lean on loops with a lot of my percussion, and when I'm doing hip hop, that means a lot of, of my hats, my stutter hats. I use splice loops for stutter hats all day long. It's not because I can't program them. I, mean, I can program them, but it's really tedious work. Tedious work that hip hop producers are exceedingly good at, arguably better at than I am. And so I incorporate loops for hi-hats, percussion, tops, those types of things, things aren't, that aren't going to get flagged by the content ID system. So there's, there's benefit number one. The second benefit is, is that because this meticulous work like stutter hats takes so long to program, to program well, if I'm looking to crank out five cues in three days, then, then I have to look for ways that I can skip over a couple of steps. I'm hesitating calling it a shortcut because you still, you can't just like, you'll notice in my queue here, I, I didn't just take it and loop drag it. I edited it, brought it down and this one's the same loop and at halftime and, and, and worked with it. So it's not just like raw, just loop dragging. This was a, a, a loop that I brought in, cut apart and then re-regioned and, and, and did things with it, which is always a good idea. So I use 
loops and percussion all the time. I use loops in one shot, or, or I use one shots all the time. And I will bring samples specifically from Splice, because I, I really like Splice. And I will load in a bunch of different samples into like an Alchemy instance so that I have access to various samples. My 808s, almost all of my 808s are splice loops that I've, that I've loaded in. In this case, I've layered them up so that it's nice and full. Worked on the filter on some of them so that they blend together. I've loaded up a lot of different uh, snare patches into an alchemy patch so that I can have one alchemy instance with four different, uh, four different snare sounds and toggle between them. So there's that, there's that guy, there's that guy, so there's that guy. And so, when, when it comes to using loops, ask yourself, is it doing, is this loop doing the heavy lifting of composition? Is it, is it a melodic idea? Is it a harmonic progression? Is it a riff that I'm looking to base my entire cue around? And if it is, you should probably back away from it. If it's a loop that, that you are uh, implementing to, to add, add additional energy to your cue or something that's not going to get caught in the content ID flag system, then I would say it's probably safe to use. At the end of the day, ask your library, ask your publisher, run it by them. They, they, they will be okay to answer that question for you because you guys are partners on this, right? If you make money, they make money. That's how the publishing deal works. So when is it safe to use loops and samples in your cues? When they are not doing the heavy work of composing. So with that, let's check out main attraction. With, uh, with uh, urban contemporary hip hop cues, the idea is to have some sort of kind of plucky melody, big 808s, and that's what is going on on here. Like I said, I use uh, I use one shots all the time to create my 808s because programming and, and, and writing 808 sounds is is uh, for me. It's it still seems like a dark art, right? I could sit there and I can tweak a, a sine wave and all of that and get it pretty close. Then I'll pull something from like a hip hop producer, a one shot, and man, it just sounds so good. And using these one shots is also super helpful because they're already a lot of times they already have the effects and everything kind of baked in. And if you're looking to create a sampled sound, then you want those those types of effects already baked into the sound. So, uh, so this is a, a, a layered uh, two, two hip hop uh, 808 type sounds. So we have that sound plus this sound, which is kind of the click and buzz of that. So here is my percussion and here, and here are my, my hats here. Here are my hats here. And this is what I was talking about uh, with the effects baked in. It already has pat panning and everything happening. Really, really good sound. The stutter is there. Then I took that same hi-hat loop and using a, a plugin called Halftime by Cable Guys, I layered in an, a halftime version of this. created this kind of clicking sound or, or this ticking clock. And then I had one additional hi-hat. So put them all three together. Now a note about layering these types of things, you have to make sure that they're not super clashy you have to make sure that they're not too busy. And so uh, if you have stutter stutter parts, you can't have all the stutters all happening at one time. And so that's that's what I've got. So this one, this one stutters, stutters here, and then that stutters.
Okay. So uh, some of the other sounds I have, this is a, a Silent uh, patch that I created that sounds kind of like a, like a, a Drake type of a bass. This is low kind of uh, drone, really, th throughout the whole thing. A couple of ambient pianos. These are Omnisphere patches. And that alternates with this sound. A little, little Koto, another Omnisphere. It's not actual sampled Koto. With Pluck Melody, again, some Omnisphere patches. I think I've said this before, but I slept on Omnisphere way too long, and I wish I would have gotten it much, much longer, longer ago. A couple of, uh, of one shots here. This is this swoosh, just to push energy into the phrases. And then a riser here. Anytime I have it drop, and then some hip hop, kind of trappy one shots. Yeah, a note about about hip hop hooks. Give your listener time to miss a hip hop cue, hip hop hook. Meaning, don't just like set it to play and and run it the entire way. You have to give your listeners kind of a, a break from it, so that when it comes back later, that it's like, hey, yeah, I miss I missed that hook, and uh, it will be it will it will it will be fresh and your listener will kind of remember, hey, I, I missed that hook. It was really good. It's like they'll have like a little 10 second nostalgia for it. All right. So that is what's been going on uh, this week, and uh, and I, I hope I hope this was helpful. Uh, as always, uh, if you have any questions, thoughts, feedback, or whatever, please leave them in the comments below. Also, it's super helpful if you like and subscribe. All of that standard YouTube business. I will see you next week. I'm, to be honest, I'm not quite sure what's on on deck for me this week. I know that we've got golf season coming up, so I'm going to start start writing golf cues, and I'm still in the midder, middle of writing these Americana tension cues. I have probably about eight more that I'm going to have to write, and then after that, it is on to happy, clappy, ukulele, glockenspiel music, and so that is all on deck over, uh, over the next couple of months. All right, so until next time, peace. <laughs>